Hi, uh, this is Dr. Balamurugan. I'm here to uh, detail about the keypad interfacing in ADF driven microcontroller. So what we are going to see through is uh, connecting a four cross four matrix keypad to a ID51 microcontroller and the process involved in interfacing this particular keypad and how do we read the data for the key pressing event that is happening in the keypad. Uh, four plus four uh, keypad as you can see on the screen, which consists of four rows and four columns and the replica of electronic circuitry that is involved there. Basically, keypad consists of a push button switches connected in uh, the rows and columns, and we'll have to read through the rows and columns look, by scanning through the keypad to identify which key has been pressed. Let's say, for example, if the key five has been pressed, what happens is the circuitry gets closed, and accordingly, the R2 and C2 will start uh, uh, with sending the data and we'll have to read the output by scanning through each row and columns. So briefly understand uh, with one more example, let's say if this particular uh, keypad 9 is being pressed, as you can see, it is blinking. So what happens internally there is that, so once this particular 9 is being pressed, you can see that the key gets closed over here and this particular uh, uh, key starts uh, receiving the data by scanning through this particular R3 and C3. So how this is being will be seen through. So first uh, let's uh, uh, go through a basic understanding. So first we connect all the rows and columns and then we'll have to connect all the rows as an input and all the columns as an output. How we do that is that by connecting through I.O. ports. We take four I.O. ports of, uh, let's say, port zero pin and connect all the rows as an input ports to this particular R1, R2, R3, R4 and connect uh, port one, uh, zero to uh, third pin as output pins connecting to column one, column two, column three and column four. So in this particular case, as assumed, if the column 5, uh, and, sorry, R2 and C2 key is being pressed where the uh, actual uh, button is actually 5. So what happens is this particular circuitry gets closed as we have seen earlier, the push button is being pressed out. And then this particular uh, eventually starts conducting and the data gets transmitted. So by, we'll have to scan through each of the row one by one. So first what we do is that we set a uh, logic zero across R1 and see whether any key pressing event has happened and it wouldn't have occurred. And we next uh, scan the next row R2 there and eventually this will uh, identify a key pressing event because this uh, uh, circuit is closed. So large, once we send a logic zero, what happens is we receive that particular logic zero in C2. So we have a, a idea that R2 uh, in row two, some key is being pressed by in from the output of column two there. Also, how this is executed and then the circuitry is, you can see here, this particular push button gets closed. So ideally what happens, The uh, it is uh, totally connected and this logic zero starts going through this particular circuitry and then it gets replaced as an output over here. This is the output that we get reflected as large zero. Okay. Then what happens is that this is the example of uh, how a keypad uh, uh, looks like, uh, which we would, uh, you'll also would be looking into the uh, apps uh, demonstration or execution as per your uh, availability. Okay, so as I've already mentioned, so first we see that uh, C2 uh, we identified that key pressing event as that. And first will we send a logic zero across uh, the input uh, R1 row. See, is there any 
uh, key is being pressed and uh, since there is no push button pressed over here so no circuit uh, is getting closed over there so no button is being pressed we uh, send a logic zero to the next row which is r2 and we understand in the c2 some particular key pressing event has happened okay so we get c2 uh, as the uh, key pressing from the matrix so the position of the matrix from the key is identified as 2 comma 2 comma 2 so once we have detected this particular so we are uh, uh, our objective would be to uh, look go into the lookup table from the lookup table we'll have to identify key is being pressed okay so we connect uh, this way so as uh, you can see over here uh, a keypad uh, has uh, uh, this uh, data pins and this data pins are connected to individual rows over here as inputs okay and we send a logic zero as i already explained so we read the output in the columns as connected over here so we connect this to other io port and then this we read through so uh, as explained in the pre previous case if let's say the six key is being pressed so the circuit gets closed and then d1 functions and then uh, we see the output in d2 of the output section the uh, Algorithm for this particular uh, program is like uh, once we start the program, the first foremost thing is that we need to ground all the rows to make uh, to uh, make all the input uh, uh, rows as input rows over there, and then we read through all the columns and we find is there any key pressing happen during that particular process. If it is so. We move on to the next uh, execution scenario or else we have to loop through again to read any uh, column, uh, read all the columns for any key pressing event. If you have identified any key pressing event, what we do is that uh, we again execute a logic called as debound uh, circuit tree. The objective of this particular debound circuit tree is that uh, in unintentionally if there is any key pressing even happened during the key pressing scenario what we'll have to do is that look into the debound circuit tree is there any key pressing even so ideally how a key pressing even would happen in a electronic circuit tree is that let's say for example uh, we have a logic one this is logic one and we have logic zero indicating a key pressing event so the state transition happens to this particular uh, logic one to logic zero that is our understanding but actually what happens is that while moving to logic zero there would be a small small change in this particular uh, so this would be the actual uh, output that we get actually uh, so, what we'll have to check is that is there any key pressing event after this particular brief delay, as we can see over here. Okay, we take this delay as 20 millisecond. Okay, so we check for this particular duration of 20 millisecond. Is the key still being pressed or not? Okay. If uh, if the key is still being pressed even after this 20 millisecond, we consider that as a key pressing event. In case the key is uh, released before this particular 20 millisecond, we understand that it is an unintentionally pressed key. So uh, we don't consider this as a key pressing event. So we go back again to read the columns. But if in case it the key is being pressed after this particular 20, 20 millisecond as we can see over here for this logic zero then we get that okay key pressing event has happened so now we are uh, we have to move on to scan scan the next set of uh, rows and columns okay so um so after that particular debounce logic, we again check the same set. Is the key still being down? If it is so, then we move on to the next uh, scanning all the rows uh, one by one. 
broke okay and check uh, is there any key pressing even if we if you identified like already we saw two comma two then we go to that lookup table from the lookup table there will be a scan code for the key that we are going to we have pressed and we identify that particular scan code and then uh, put that scan code into this particular uh, key pressing. so now let's get into uh, uh, the illustration of this particular key pressing event by connecting a four cross four keypad to a lcd and then whatever key that we are pressing let's read that particular uh, key pressing in an LCD. Okay. So the program is to write a uh, assembly language program for, uh, for the 8051 to interface a 4 cross 4 matrix keypad and an LCD. In any key pressing on the keypad, we must display that in LCD. So the consideration here is that we have connected all the rows to port 10123 pins and all the columns of this particular keypad to Port 0, 0 pin, 1, 2, and 3rd pin. So we make all the port 1 pins as uh, input pins and all the port 0 pins as output pins. That is the uh, understanding. Okay. Coming into this programming, we start our program from uh, 0 and then we straight away jump start to uh, make the ports as an input port to initialize this particular LED. One, sorry, LCD. And once we initialize our LCD, uh, it is understood that the LCD program is uh, interfacing is known to you all. Uh, in other case, I request to go back to the earlier videos and uh, uh, understand this how LCD programming is happening. So, what happens is that as I already mentioned earlier, whatever key pressing that we are doing, we initialize the LCD to print whatever key that we are pressing in the LCD. Okay. So now moving on to this particular keypad programming. So what we do is that we make all the ports as an input ports. So we have grounded all the rows at once. We have grounded all the rows at once and we read through the columns to see any key pressing has happened. So what uh, would have happened is that uh, we have connected uh, uh, the uh, P0 to all the columns so which means we have only four pins in the columns right we don't uh, which are the lower four pins the higher four pins is not uh, connected so we have to mask the higher four pins we don't want any data in case let's assume the higher four pins are connected to some other interfacing kits we don't want uh, outputs reflecting from that particular pins into our uh, the, uh, calculations so we wanted to mask those uh, output pins which may have been connected in other cases. So that is why we use a AND logic to mask the higher four bits to retain only the lower four bits. Okay. So once we receive the lower four bits of data that is available with us, we execute a compare and jump on not equal logic to check any key pressing even. So uh, here there is a mistake. It would be not K2, it would be K1. Okay. So what we do is that uh, we check only for the lower four bits. If in case there is a key pressing event, uh, it would uh, move out of this particular loop. In other case, what happens? It loops uh, within this particular uh, uh, K1 loop to check whether any key pressing event has happened in this column. Okay. So then what we do is that we move to the next section of code. Okay, here we'll have to now scan through the rows. Now, right. So before that, uh, we call we'll call for a small delay. After this particular small delay, we check is there any key being pressed by scanning through the rows. Yeah. Right. So we read uh, uh, any key is being pressed here. We mask all the bits because, as I already mentioned, we don't use the higher four bits, we use only the lower four bits. So, what we do, we check this particular uh, uh, logic and then we, we come over and then look into any key pressing event happens. Uh, as I've already explained, uh, if the if any key is being pressed, if it is not matching this particular uh, 1111, which indicates no key being pressed okay 
if a key is being pressed, it will result in a logic zero in any one of this particular values, pins. So what happens is that this value will not match. So what happens, it will move to the next loop. Next loop, the objective is to check for any debounce. If in case it matches, it indicates no key is being pressed. So it will again, what happens is that it will loop through here. The K2 loop itself, waiting for any key pressing event. Okay. Now, coming into this debounce logic, we call for a small 20 millisecond to validate any key pressing event for this particular debounce time, as I've already explained. Again, what we do is that we execute all these instructions again, again to check again any key is being pressed even after that particular 20 millisecond only then we consider key is being pressed right so we check uh, the same logic by uh, masking the bits higher four bits and then checking is there any key pressing so if a key is being still being pressed even after this 20 millisecond delay so which means any one of this may be a logic zero so which means it will not match this particular uh, uh, output value so uh, we move on to next section of code okay so the next section of code uh, is to uh, read the uh, uh, row by row to see what is happening so now the objective is to read uh, one by one rows okay so what we do is that first uh, we uh, read uh, row zero okay by grounding that particular row only you can see over here we have grounded only row zero all other uh, uh, pins we have made it one so to ensure we read one we send a logic zero only to row zero and we read all the columns okay and we check uh, the same uh, execution mask the higher four bits and then check the any one of the columns is uh, sending an output okay if in case any one of the columns is sending an output uh, what happens is that we understand any one of the key in row zero is being pressed so what happens is that we jump to that particular row zero section of code row zero section of code contains uh, looks into the lookup table to find any key which particular key has to be fetched from the key scan code table okay if in case uh, no uh, key in row zero is being pressed what happens is that the program jumps to the next section of code here what we do is that we now go on to scan row one as you can see we made uh, the uh, p0.1 as uh, sorry p1.1 as zero by sending a logic zero by grounding it and we put all others as one and then again we scan all the columns again we mask the higher four bits and we check with the compare and jump on not equal to see whether any key is being pressed if in case it will move to that particular row one lookup table we'll look into uh, row two and row uh, three also okay so by this way we'll identify in any one of the rows any one of the key uh, uh, key is being pressed so we jump into the respective row so what happens in this particular row zero section of code is that uh, we'll have to uh, go and look into the lookup table of uh, key code zero okay so this key code zero has the lookup table of uh, row zero row zero will have keypads zero one two three keys so it will connect uh, zeroth uh, uh, key uh, d, uh, to dptr so it will assign the dptr value to that row zero and then we'll jump into the section of code uh, to find uh, 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 subroutine where we would have written to scan through each of the keys and find uh, uh, which key is being pressed by scanning through it okay in in uh, the same goes to row one row two row three except that the data pointer looks into the respective starting address location of that particular uh, uh, key code table or the lookup table 
okay so next uh, would be so what happens in the uh, find uh, subroutine program is that now we have scanned through the uh, i mean we have connected our dptr dptr would fetch the first value let's say for row 0 row 0 the first value is zero data and this zero data is uh, being uh, put into uh, this particular accumulator okay so then what we do is that we uh, send this particular rotate right with carry so uh, accumulator will shift that value uh, one to the carry or zero to the carry whatever that last bit there so we check is the carry being set or not if there was a key pressing event so it would have set a value basically. so if there is no carry okay what happens is that it would uh, jump to this particular location because uh, remember we send a logic zero if a logic zero means we get a logic zero so because of that we a carry would be set okay if we if we send a, a shift through this particular rotate right with carry but if there was no carry it indicates there is a logic zero so this logic zero we receive here okay so it's an indication that that particular key is being pressed so let's say zero key is being pressed okay so zero key being pressed means last uh, bit will have zero of that accumulator so what happens is that while we are uh, rotating right with carry that zero would have moved to carry so once it has come to carry it is checking the next line of instruction jump on no carry and now since zero is being pressed logic zero is being identified in the last bit which is uh, sent to carry carry is uh, having zero logic zero right now so it is understood that particular uh, zero key is being pressed so we jump to this particular match section where we clear the zero uh, sorry clear the accumulator so once we clear the accumulator that particular uh, uh, accumulator uh, means uh, the data pointer which is pointing to data zero zero uh, key the keypad data zero okay so that value we uh, move it to accumulator once we move that value to accumulator what happens is that that particular value we print it into the lcd okay so we jump into the section of code of lcd to print that see here what we do is that we go back to the very first section of execution of our code where we'll have to scan all the columns again and then look into uh, if a key is being pressed again we need to check through the uh, rows in one by one let's say if key zero is not pressed key one is being pressed for example so what happens is that uh, so first rotate right with carry will send a one out of to carry jump on no carry but uh, there is a carry actually so what happens is that this will uh, this instruction is not uh, validated it goes on to the next instruction data pointer gets incremented so if the data pointer is incremented so it goes to uh, from data 0 to data 1 in the lookup table so it will again uh, go back to this particular section of code so now we are again rotating right with carry right now the last bit would be zero because key one is being pressed okay so what happens the logic zero key one pressed is being reflected when we execute this particular rotate right with carry now no carry is there so jump on no carry match so it is understood this particular uh, one is indicating the logic zero of key one being pressed so it will go back and then we'll have to clear the accumulator but the data pointer is pointing to uh, one key right now so we move that value to accumulator and then print the value into the lcd screen okay so this way we'll be able to identify from which row 
which key is being pressed so that we can uh, uh, identify that particular key pressing event. So here is the section of code where we want that particular 20 millisecond delay uh, to calculate for demounts logic execution and also for in case other executions we use this particular uh, 20 millisecond delay program. Okay. And then next is that uh, uh, the uh, I was talking about a lookup table for each of the rows, right? Uh, for uh, row 0, row 1, row 2, row 3. Okay. So the database is giving this particular uh, uh, lookup table for each of the keys that it is being pressed over here. Okay. So this way we'll be able to uh, identify uh, the keys in the individual. So this section of code, uh, we are trying to make use from that particular LCD initialized program. We are trying to use the same set of code. See, remember, uh, let's say, for example, 38 uh, is used as a command. Command is 38 is to uh, make use of all the two rows. And also, we wanted to uh, initialize all the pi cross 7 matrix of each of the individual elements of this uh, two rows, uh, 16 columns. Uh, 0e command is to uh, make the cursor on and uh, display on. We clear the screen and then we send the data and then uh, we start printing from the first uh, column of that particular, sorry, first row, first column of that LCD. And then uh, we need to connect our, uh, um, the, uh, the uh, register select pin and then uh, write, read, write, enable, read, write, and then enable pin to the respective ports over there and then start uh, reading. So once we read the data, uh, we print it to the LC. So this way we'll be able to uh, identify the key pressing event that has happened. Okay. So in the following slide, I'll explain how this particular uh, LCD program is executed. Okay. Thank you.